Welcome to Conic Sections, Examples of Graphing Ellipses. In the previous video, we constructed an ellipse and derived the equation of an ellipse. An ellipse has a center with coordinates h, k, and two foci that are on opposite sides of the center the same distance away. If the foci are to the left and right of the center, the ellipse has a horizontal major axis, that's the longer axis of the ellipse. If the foci are above and below the center, the ellipse has a vertical major axis. The distance from the center to the end of the major axis is called A. The distance from the center to the end of the minor axis is called B. The major axis is always the longer one, and it's always the one that's called A, whether that is horizontal or vertical. The minor axis is always the shorter one, and it's always called b, whether that is horizontal or vertical. In the equation of an ellipse, the variables x and y are each contained in squares. The simplest form has the center at the origin, x squared and y squared. If the center of the ellipse is somewhere else, we see x minus h, the quantity squared, and y minus k, the quantity squared where h, k are the coordinates of the center. In the denominator under the term involving the x, you see the square of the distance from the center to the end of the horizontal axis. If the horizontal is the longer axis, we call that a. If the horizontal is the shorter axis, we call that b. But always the term under the x is the square of the length from the center to the end of the horizontal axis. Under the y squared term, we have the square of the distance from the center to the end of the vertical axis. When the major axis is vertical, the distance from the center to the end of that major axis is called a. When the minor axis is vertical, the distance from the center to the end of that axis is called b. a with the longer, b with the shorter, whether they're horizontal or vertical. And whatever's under the x is for the horizontal. Whatever's under the y is for the vertical. And on the other side of the equal sign, we have a 1. The distance from the center to a focus is called c. We can form a right triangle here with corners at the center, one end of the minor axis, and a focus. The hypotenuse of this triangle is a, the same length as the distance from the center to one end of the major axis. Because this is a right triangle, we get a Pythagorean relationship involving a and b and c but the letters aren't arranged quite in the way we're used to. We usually say a squared plus b squared equals c squared because usually we call the hypotenuse c. In this triangle, the hypotenuse is a. b squared plus c squared equals a squared. Or if you want c squared, as we will, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. To graph an ellipse, we need to use algebra on our equation to put it into the standard form. Our first ellipse example has x plus 2 the quantity squared plus 4 times y minus 6 the quantity squared equals 36. This one is almost in the standard form. The x is in a square and the y is in a square. But on the far side of the equal sign we have a 36. We would like to have 1. So we divide all the way through by the 36. Where we have a fraction that can be reduced, we do reduce it. 4 over 36 is the same as 1 over 9, so we get x plus 2 quantity squared over 36 plus y minus 6 the quantity squared over 9 equals 1. That lacks only a few minor touches of being in the standard form. The standard form calls for x minus something and y minus something, so we change the x plus 2 to x minus negative 2. And the standard form calls for squares in the denominator, so we write 36 as 6 squared and 9 as 3 squared. Now that we have the equation in the standard form, we can see that the center has coordinates negative 2, 6. The number subtracted from the x is the x-coordinate of the center. The number subtracted from the y is the y-coordinate of the center. We'll just graph that point right here. And then from the denominators, we see that one has 6 squared and the other has 3 squared. a is always the larger one, in this case 6, and b is the smaller one. The one under the x is always the horizontal one. In this case, the one under the x, the 6, is the larger one, so the major axis is horizontal. Because the denominator under the x squared term is 6 squared, 
from the center we go six spaces to the left and six spaces to the right. Because the denominator under the y squared term is three squared, from the center we go three spaces up and three spaces down. This gives us a box. The ellipse will touch the centers of the sides of the box. These four points where the ellipse touches the box are called the vertices of the ellipse. We draw an ellipse passing through the vertices, looking sort of like a circle that was squished to fit in the box. Finally, we would like to show the foci, so we need the distance c from the center to the focus. c is part of a Pythagorean relationship with a and b. The two smaller ones, b and c, when squared, add to the square of the largest one, which is a. I know we usually talk about the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but in an ellipse it's not quite that. b squared plus c squared equals a squared. A is the largest of those three numbers. So to get c squared, we take a squared and subtract b squared. 36 subtract 9 is 27. c is then the square root of 27, which is about 5.2. We go 5.2 spaces away from the center on each side to get to the foci. The foci are always on the major axis. Whichever axis is longer, that one has the foci on it. The major axis in this case is horizontal, so the foci are to the left and right of the center, 5.2 spaces out. The foci are always inside the ellipse. If you ever find yourself drawing foci outside the ellipse, go back and check for a mistake. For our next ellipse example, we have 64 times the quantity x squared plus 6x plus 9, plus 25 times the quantity y squared plus 4y plus 4, equals 1,600. We remember from the standard form that we want the x and the y to be in squares. Well, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is a perfect square. We can factor that to x plus 3, the quantity squared. And the same thing with y squared plus 4y plus 4. That factors to y plus 2, the quantity squared. Now we have the perfect squares we want for the ellipse equation. The next thing to consider is we would like that constant on the right side of the equal sign to be 1. Right now, it's 1600. So we divide through by 1600, and that puts a 1 where we need it on the right side. On the left side, we reduce the fractions. 64 over 1600 is 1 over 25, and 25 over 1600 is 1 over 64. There's only a little bit left here to put it completely in the standard form. Wherever you have an addition, you need to change it to a subtraction of a negative. So instead of x plus 3, we have x minus a negative 3. And the denominator should be written as squares. 25 is 5 squared. Also, y plus 2 becomes y minus negative 2. And 64 becomes 8 squared. Now we can see we have an ellipse with a center at negative 3, negative 2. We'll just plot that point here. a is the larger of those two numbers that are squared in the denominator, so it's 8. b is the other one, it's 5. The major axis is whichever one has the a, has the larger denominator. So in this case, since the 8 squared is under the y term and not the x, the major axis is vertical. From our center, we go 8 spaces up and 8 spaces down to draw the top and bottom of our box. And then we go 5 spaces to the left and 5 spaces to the right to draw the sides of the box. Then we can find the vertices of the ellipse. The vertices are at the centers of the sides of the box, directly left and right of the center of the ellipse, directly up and down from the center of the ellipse. And then we can draw an ellipse through those vertices. I've seen some students draw ellipse with points on the ends, but ellipses are not pointed, they're round. They look kind of like a circle that was squished a little bit to fit in the box. Finally, we would like to show the foci, so we need the distance c from the center to the focus. Remember that Pythagorean relationship. We start with the hypotenuse, the longest side, which is a. a squared minus the square of one of the legs has to give the square of the other leg. So for c squared, it's a squared minus b squared. 64 minus 25 is 39. c squared is 39, so c is the square root of 39, which is about 6.24. The longer axis is vertical, so we go up and down 6.2 spaces from the center
to find the foci, and they are, as they always should be, in the ellipse. Our third ellipse example leaves a little more work for us to do before we're ready to graph. We have 4 times the quantity x squared plus 6x plus 9 times the quantity y squared plus 10y equals negative 117. This time we don't have a perfect square. x squared plus 6x could be factored. It could be factored into x times x plus 6, but that's not a square. We need a square. So we remember how to complete the square. We take the linear term in the quantity x squared plus 6x. The linear term is the 6x, the one that does not have an exponent on the x. We want the coefficient from that linear term, the plus 6, divide by 2. So we have x plus 3 in our square. If you multiply out x plus 3 quantity squared, you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we need a plus 9 in there. Now, if you're going to add 9 to one side of the equal sign, you need to also add 9 to the other side. But just adding 9 doesn't quite keep the balance. On the left, that 9 is inside parentheses multiplied by a 4. So it's really 4 times 9 is 36. We need to add that same thing on the other side of the equal sign, 9 in parentheses multiplied by 4. We repeat this process on the y. The linear term is the 10y. Coefficient is positive 10, half of that is positive 5, so we want y plus 5 in our square. If we multiply out y plus 5, the quantity squared, we get y squared plus 10y plus 25. So we need a plus 25 on the left. We also have to add 25 on the right. On the left, our 25 was multiplied by 9, so to keep the balance on the right, our 25 also has to be multiplied by 9. That leaves 4 times the quantity x plus 3, the quantity squared, plus 9 times the quantity y plus 5, the quantity squared, equals negative 117 plus 36 plus 225. And all of those numbers combine to give 144. Now we have completed squares. That's the first step we need. The next thing we think about is that constant on the right-hand side should be 1. It's currently 144. So we divide by 144, and reduce the fractions. So we have x plus 3 quantity squared is over 36, plus y plus 5 the quantity squared over 16 equals 1. And the last finishing touch, to put it in standard form, wherever we have addition, we have to write it as subtraction of a negative, x minus a negative 3 quantity squared, and y minus a negative 5 quantity squared, and the denominators, of course, should also be written as squares. 36 is 6 squared, and 16 is 4 squared. This gives us a center at negative 3, negative 5. We can find that here on the graph. a, the larger of the two numbers that are squared in the denominators, is 6, and b is 4. In this case, the larger number, the 6, is under the x term, so our major axis is horizontal. From the center, we go 6 spaces to the left and to the right, to find the ends of the box. Then we go four spaces up and down to find the top and the bottom of the box. The vertices are at the centers of the sides of the box, and then we run our ellipse through those vertices inside the box. Finally, we'd like to put the foci in this ellipse. The foci are going to be on the major axis, which is horizontal, so they should be to the left and right of the center by a distance we call c. Remember that c squared is a squared minus b squared, so that is 36 minus 16, or 20. If c squared is 20, then c must be the square root of 20, which is about 4 and a half. From the center, we go 4 and a half spaces to the right to get one focus, and we go 4 and a half spaces to the left to get the other focus. Now for the final example. This one has more algebra than the rest, but we've worked up to it. If you've been able to follow everything I've done so far, you should be ready for it. We start with 25x squared plus 9y squared plus 100x minus 18y minus 791 is 0. First, we bring the x terms together, 25x squared plus 100x, and we bring the y terms together, plus 9y squared minus 18y, and we put the constant, the 791, on the other side of the equal sign. 
then whatever the coefficient is on the square, we have to factor that out. There's a 25 on the x squared, so we factor 25 out of all of the x terms, giving 25 times the quantity x squared plus 4x. We do the same thing with the y terms. There's a 9 on the y squared, so we have to factor a 9 out of all the y terms, leaving 9 times y squared minus 2y, and of course the 791 on the other side. Now we would like to have perfect squares. We would like to have the x in a square, and we would like to have the y in a square. So we find the linear term, 4x, the coefficient is 4, we take half of that, that's 2. The 4 was positive, so the 2 is also positive, and we're going to have the quantity x plus 2 quantity squared. If we multiply that out, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4, so we need a plus 4 in there. If we're going to add 4 to one side of the equal sign, we also have to add 4 on the other side, but not just 4. The 4 on the left is in parentheses multiplied by 25, and so the 4 on the right has to be in parentheses multiplied by 25. Same thing on both sides. We repeat the process with the y's. The linear term has a coefficient of negative 2. Half of that is negative 1, so our quantity is y minus 1, quantity squared. And when you multiply that out, you get y squared minus 2y plus 1. We add 1 on the left side, we have to add 1 on the right side. The 1 on the left was multiplied by 9, so the 1 on the right has to be multiplied by 9. This gives 25 times the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 9 times the quantity y minus 1 quantity squared equals 791 plus 100 plus 9. That cleans up to 900. Now that we have squares, we're ready for the next stage, which is we want a 1 on the right side of the equal sign, where we currently have a 900. So we divide everything through by the 900, and then we reduce. That gives x plus 2 quantity squared over 36, plus y minus 1 quantity squared over 100 equals 1. And then our last steps for standard form, we write the additions as subtraction of a negative, so x minus a negative 2 quantity squared, and y minus 1 is already a subtraction. And in the denominators, we write those as squares. So 36 is 6 squared, and 100 is 10 squared. This gives us a center at negative 2, 1. A is the larger of those two numbers that are squared in the denominators, so it's 10. B is the smaller one. The 10, the larger one, is under the y. So the major axis, the long axis, is vertical. We would also like to know where to put the foci, so we need to find C. We take the larger of the denominators, the a squared, subtract the b squared, and that gives us c squared. c squared is then 100 minus 36, which is 64, and so c equals 8. Under the x, we have 6 squared, so we go 6 spaces to the right of center and to the left of center. Under the y, we have 10 squared, so we go 10 spaces above the center and below. This forms the box. The vertices are at the centers of the sides of the box. And then we draw an ellipse through the vertices. And finally, we put in the foci. We've discovered that c is 8, so we go 8 spaces up from the center and 8 spaces down from the center to get the foci. We've now graphed ellipses with both horizontal and vertical major axes. We've located the foci. We've completed the square several times. These are the skills that you will need to graph ellipses. In the next video, we construct the hyperbola. The equation of a hyperbola is very much like the equation of an ellipse. All of these same skills of completing the square and so on will all be useful on the hyperbola, even though the graph has a very different shape.